Now we come to an important sutta. Those two, those two suttas are not important. 125, Danta Bhumi Sutta, the great of the team. One of the, one, one of the suttas I like very much. Thus have I heard, on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Now on that occasion, the novice Achiravata was living in a forest hut, a kuti. Then Prince Jayasena, while wandering and walking for exercise, went to the novice Achiravata and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side and said to the novice Achiravata, Master Agivesana, I have heard that a monk who abides here diligent, ardent and resolute can achieve unification of mind, or one-pointedness. Eh? And the novice said, That is so, Prince, that is so. A monk who abides here diligent, ardent and resolute can achieve unification of mind. It would be good if Master Agivesana would teach me the Dhamma as he has heard it and mastered it. And the novice said, I cannot teach you the Dhamma, Prince, as I have heard it and mastered it. For if I were to teach you the Dhamma as I have heard it and mastered it, you would not understand the meaning of my words, and that would be wearing and troublesome for me. And he, he said, Let Master Agivesana teach me the Dhamma as he has heard it and mastered it. Perhaps I can understand the meaning of his words. I shall teach you the Dhamma Prince as I have heard it and mastered it. If you can understand the meaning of my words, that will be good. But if you cannot understand the meaning, then leave it at that and do not question me about it further. Let Master Agivesana teach me the Dhamma as he has heard it and mastered it. If I can understand the meaning of his words, that will be good. If I cannot understand the meaning, then I will leave it at that and I will not question him about it further. Stop it for a moment. So here this novice, uh, he's not very confident uh, of teaching the Dhamma. Uh, so he told this, uh, at first he didn't want to teach, uh, but this prince uh, persisted, uh, asked him a second time. So he said, okay, uh, I'll teach you. But don't ask me more than what I say. Uh, uh. Then the novice Achiravata taught Prince Jayasena the Dhamma as he has heard it and mastered it. After he had spoken, Prince Jayasena remarked, It is impossible, Master Agivesana. It cannot happen that a monk who abides diligent, ardent and resolute can achieve unification of mind. Then having declared to the novice Achiravata that this was impossible and could not happen, Prince Jayasena rose from his seat and departed. Soon after Prince Jasena had left, the novice Achiravata went to the Blessed One. After paying homage to the Blessed One, he sat down at one side and reported to the Blessed One his entire conversation with Prince Jasena. When he had finished, the Blessed One said to him, Agivesana, how is it possible that Prince Jasena, living in the midst of sensual pleasures, enjoying sensual pleasures, being devoured by thoughts of sensual pleasures, being consumed by the fever of sensual pleasures, bent on the search for sensual pleasures, could know, see or realize that which must be known through renunciation, seen through renunciation, attained through renunciation, realized through renunciation. That is impossible. Now stop here for a moment. So the Buddha says, huh? There's no point talking to somebody like Prince Jayasena who enjoys sensual pleasures, huh? is uh, devoured by sensual pleasures, huh? uh, consumed by the fever of sensual pleasures. Huh? Uh, such a person, huh? he cannot realize, huh? cannot understand huh? what must be realized or understood huh? through renunciation. Huh? Uh, so you can see here, huh? it's very clear huh? what the Buddha says, huh? is that... Uh, Unless we renounce our sensual pleasures, uh, give up the things of the world, uh, it's not possible to practice the holy life. Uh, uh. This contradicts the later Mahayana and Tibetan teachings, uh, uh, Mahayana and Tibetan teachings uh, which cropped up later. Uh, they, they say uh, it's possible uh, to uh, be a worldly person uh, and uh, attain... Uh, uh, achieve uh, higher states than the Arahan, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Malakalti Sutra and all that. Mm. 
Suppose I give Vesana, there were two tameable elephants, horses or oxen, that were well tamed and well disciplined, and two tameable elephants, horses or oxen, that were untamed and undisciplined. What do you think, Agi Vesana? Would the two tameable elephants, horses or oxen, that were well tamed and well disciplined, being tamed, acquire the behavior of the tamed? Would they arrive at the grade of the tamed? Yes, Member Sir. But would the two tameable elephants, horses or oxen that were untamed and undisciplined, being untamed, acquire the behavior of the tamed, would they arrive at the grade of the tamed, like the two tameable elephants, horses or oxen that were well tamed and well disciplined? No, Venerable Sir. So too, Agivesana, it is impossible that Prince Jayasena, living in the midst of sensual pleasures, enjoying sensual pleasures, being devoured by thoughts of sensual pleasures, being consumed by the fever of sensual pleasures, bent on the search for sensual pleasures, could know, see or realize that which must be known through renunciation, seen through renunciation, attained through renunciation, realized through renunciation. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So here the Buddha is saying, huh, before a person huh, can behave like a uh, tamed and, and, and uh, uh, disciplined uh, person. Uh, he must undergo this process uh, of training uh, and taming, uh, just like uh, monks undergo. Uh, uh, so a person who is uh, very worldly, uh, he cannot realize uh, what a uh, renunciant uh, can realize. Uh. Suppose, Agivesana, uh, there were a high mountain not far from a village or town, and two friends would leave the village or town and approach the mountain hand in hand. Having reached it, one friend would remain below at the foot of the mountain, while the other would climb to the top. Then the friend who remained below at the foot of the mountain would say to the friend who stood at the top, Well, friend, what do you see standing on top of the mountain? And the other replied, Standing on top of the mountain, friend, I see lovely parks, lovely groves, lovely meadows and lovely ponds. Then the first friend would say, It is impossible, friend, it cannot happen that while standing on top of the mountain you should see lovely parks, lovely groves, lovely meadows and lovely ponds. Then the other friend would come down to the foot of the mountain, take his friend by the arm and make him climb to the top of the mountain. After giving him a few moments to catch his breath, he would ask, Well, friend, standing on top of the mountain, what do you see? And his friend would reply, Standing on top of the mountain, friend, I see lovely parks, lovely groves, lovely meadows and lovely ponds. Then the other would say, Friend, just a little earlier we heard you say, It is impossible, friend. It cannot happen that while standing on top of the mountain, you should see lovely parks, lovely groves, lovely ponds. But just now we heard you say, Standing on top of the mountain, I see lovely parks, lovely groves, lovely ponds. Then the first friend would reply, because I was obstructed by this high mountain friend, I did not see what was there to be seen. So too, Agivesana, Prince Jasena is obstructed, hindered, blocked and enveloped by a still greater mass than this, the mass of ignorance. Thus it is impossible that Prince Jasena, living in the midst of sensual pleasures, enjoying sensual pleasures, being devoured by thoughts of sensual pleasures, being consumed by the fever of sensual pleasures, when on the search of sensual pleasures, could know, see or realize that which must be known through renunciation, seen through renunciation, attained through renunciation, realized through renunciation. Uh, stop here for a moment. So this second example the Buddha gave, uh, simile, uh, that uh, the person at the bottom of the mountain, uh, he cannot see uh, so clearly uh, like the person on top of the mountain. Uh, this reminds me, just like some people, they have not attained the jhanas and they practice vipassana meditation and they belittle the jhanas. They say there's no more mindfulness in the jhanas. They say in the state of jhana, you cannot have wisdom because it's like in the trance state. You cannot use your mind at all. It's just like this, this simile. You have to go up to the top of the hill uh, before you can know. So at the same uh, uh, until that person attains the jhanas, uh, he doesn't know uh, that the, the mind uh, at that 
when after the person has attained the jhanas, uh, he's rid of the of the hindrances, uh, so you see much clearer than a person uh, with the hindrances. Uh. So the person with the hindrances, uh, uh, practicing vipassana teaching, uh, is like somebody. Uh, he looks all around uh, and he sees he can see a clear view of everything, but the view that he sees uh, is not as clear as a person up the mountain. Uh, it's a different different view and all. So here the Buddha says, uh, Prince Jasena is obstructed, uh, hindered and blocked uh, by the mass of ignorance. Uh, he doesn't know the Dhamma, he hasn't practiced the Dhamma, he hasn't trained in the Dhamma. So he's an untamed person, untrained and untamed. How can he attain uh, what has to be attained uh, through the renunciation? Agivesana, uh, if these two similes had occurred to you, in reference to Prince Jayasena, he would have spontaneously acquired confidence in you, and being confident would have shown his confidence to you. And the novice said, Well, sir, how could these two similes have occurred to me in reference to Prince Jayasena as they occur to the Blessed One, since they are spontaneous and have never been heard before? And now the Buddha is going to give a simile uh, of a forest uh, elephant, uh, which is a very beautiful simile. Uh. Suppose Agivesana, a head anointed noble king, addresses his elephant woodsman thus, Good elephant woodsman, mount the king's elephant, enter the elephant wood, and when you see a forest elephant, bind him by the neck to the king's elephant. Having replied, Yes, sire, the elephant woodsman, mounts the king's elephant, enters the elephant wood, and when he sees a forest elephant, binds him by the neck to the king's elephant. The king's elephant leads him out into the open. It is in this way that a forest elephant comes out into the open, for the forest elephant clings to the elephant wood. Then the elephant woodsman informs the head anointed noble king, Sire, the forest elephant has come out into the open. The king addresses his elephant tamer thus, Come, good elephant tamer, tame the forest elephant, subdue his forest habits, subdue his forest memories and intentions, subdue his distress, fatigue and fever over leaving the forest, get him to take delight in the town, inculcate in him habits congenial to human beings. Having replied, Yes, sire, the elephant tamer plants a large pose in the earth, and binds the forest elephant to it by the neck in order to subdue his forest habits, subdue his forest memories and intentions, subdue his distress, fatigue and fever over leaving the forest, and get him to take delight in the town, inculcate in him habits congenial to human beings. Then the elephant tamer addresses the elephant with words that are gentle, pleasing to the ear and lovable as go to the heart, are courteous, desired by many, and agreeable to many. When the forest elephant is addressed by such words, he listens, gives ear, and exerts his mind to understand. The elephant tamer next rewards him with grass fodder and water. When the forest elephant accepts the grass fodder and water from him, the elephant tamer knows, now the king's elephant will live. Then the elephant tamer trains him further thus, take up, put down. Then when the king's elephant obeys his tamer's orders to take up and put down, and carries out his instructions, the elephant tamer trains him further thus, go forward, go back. When the king's elephant obeys his tamer's orders to go forward and go back, and carries out his instructions, the elephant tamer trains him further thus, get up, sit down, and the elephant's when the king's elephant obeys his tamer's orders to get up and sit down and carries out his instructions, the elephant tamer trains him further in the task called imperturbability. He ties a giant plank to his trunk. A man with a lance in his hand sits on his neck. Men with lances in their hands surround him on all sides. And the elephant tamer himself stands in front of him holding a long lance pole. When the elephant is being trained in the task of imperturbability, he does not move his four legs or his hind legs. He does not move his four quarters or his hind quarters. He does not move his head, ears, tusks, tail or trunk. 
the king's elephant is able to endure blows from spears, blows from swords, blows from arrows, blows from other beings, and the thundering sound of drums, kettle drums, trumpets and tom-toms. Being rid of all faults and defects, purge of laws, he is worthy of the king in the king's service, considered one of the factors of a king. I'll stop here for a moment. So you see how they train the elephant until uh, he can stand uh, blows and sounds and all these things. Uh, and mentioned in some other suttas, uh, he'll be even willing to give up his life uh, for his trainer. This is a well-trained, well-tamed uh, king's elephant. So to Agivesana, a Tathagata appears in the world, Arhan, Samasam Buddha, etc. And teaches the Dhamma and somebody hears the Dhamma and decides to uh, renounce the home life la, and shave off his hair and beard, la, put on the yellow robe la, and goes forth from the home life into homelessness. It is in this way that a noble disciple come, comes out into the open. For gods and humans cling to the five causes of sensual pleasure. I stop here for a moment. La. So you see this uh, simile. I eh? uh, so spot on. Eh? Just like the forest elephant, eh? He doesn't want to come out of the forest at all. Uh. He's so used to the forest. Uh. Uh, he needs uh, another bigger elephant uh, to force him out of the forest, uh, pull him out uh, forcefully. Uh. Then only he will come out. Uh. So in the same way, a uh, normal human being, uh, so used to the home life, uh, is extremely reluctant uh, to renounce uh, and become a monk. Uh, a lot of people uh, is... Uh, it's, it's, it's impossible that they will give up the home life. Uh, so this, uh, this uh, like this simile very much uh, for this. Uh. Then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come monk, be virtuous. Restrain with the restraint of the Patimoka. Be perfect in conduct and resort. Seeing fear in the slightest form. Train by undertaking the training precepts. When Akivesana, the noble disciple, is virtuous, restrained with the restraint of the Patimoka, etc. Uh, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, monk, guard the doors of your sense faculties. On seeing a form with the eye, do not grasp at its signs and features. Since you, if you were to leave the eye faculty unguarded, evil and wholesome states of covetousness and grief might invade you. Practice the way of its restraint. Guard the eye faculty. Undertake the restraint of the eye faculty. Similarly, on hearing a sound with the ear, smelling an odor with the nose, tasting a flavor with the tongue, touching a tangible with the body, cognizing a mind object with the mind, do not grasp at its features and signs, features and uh, signs and features. Since if you were to leave the faculties unguarded, evil and wholesome states of covetousness and grief might invade you. Practice the way of the restraint. Guard the faculties. Undertake the restraint of the faculties. When Akivesana, the noble disciple, guards the doors of his sense faculties, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, monk, be moderate in eating. Reflecting wisely, you should take food neither for amusement, nor for intoxication, nor for the sake of physical beauty and attractiveness, but only for the endurance and continuance of this body for ending discomfort and for assisting the holy life, considering, thus I shall terminate old feelings without arousing new feelings, and I shall be healthy and blameless, and shall live in comfort. When Agivesana, the noble disciple, is moderate in eating, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, monk, be devoted to wakefulness during the day, while walking back and forth and sitting, to purify your mind of obstructive states. In the first watch of the night, while walking back and forth and sitting, purify your mind of obstructive states. In the middle watch of the night, you should lie down on the right side in the lion's pose, with one foot overlapping the other, mindful and fully aware, after noting in your mind the time for rising. After rising in the last watch of the night, while walking back and forth and sitting, purify your mind of obstructive states. When Agivesana, the noble disciple, is devoted to wakefulness, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, monk, be possessed of 
mindfulness and full awareness or mindfulness and recollection. Act in full awareness when going forward and returning, when looking ahead and looking away, and flexing and extending your limbs, when wearing your robes and carrying your outer robe and bowl, when eating, drinking, consuming food and tasting, when defecating and urinating, when walking, standing, sitting, falling asleep, waking up, talking and keeping silent. When Agivesana, the noble disciple, possesses mindfulness and full awareness, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, monk, be sought to a secluded resting place, the forest, the root of a tree, a mountain, a ravine, a hillside cave, a channel ground, a jungle thicket, an open space, or a heap of straw. I'll stop here for a moment. So here you see, just like the elephant, he trains one step at a time. So here the Buddha says, he disciplines his disciples in the same way. First, they have to keep the precepts. After they renounce, they keep the precepts. Be careful to train, to be perfect in conduct and resort. Conduct is there, how they conduct themselves. Resort is where they go to. And then after that, to guard the, the, the doors of the sense faculties, the six senses, not to pay too much attention uh, to sight, sound, smell, taste, touch and thoughts. Uh. Then after that, to be moderate in eating, uh, eating only in the morning, uh, uh, not in the afternoon and night, uh, uh, although there are allowances. Uh. And then uh, devoted to wakefulness, uh, uh, not to sleep too much. Uh, uh. And then to practice mindfulness uh, and recollection, uh, recollecting the uh, four Objects of sati, yeah? the body, feelings, the mind, and the dhamma. Then, after he has trained uh, for five years under a senior monk, uh, then he is allowed to resort to a secluded resting place uh, to live alone. Uh, 